All right. Um, good morning, everyone. We're going to take a quick look at uh, see if there's any access issues. I want to bring you up to date as the state window opened yesterday. I uh, want to make sure that uh, any questions that you have out there uh, are at least addressed. So the way this is set up, if you uh, take a look at the bottom menu, uh, you should be able to see uh, the uh, a chat button. If you can't want to ask a question, you can certainly chat that question. Um, it is available to everyone to see. Otherwise, e send me an email and I'll address the questions as we go um, probably later today. So I'm going to uh, jump to a uh, PowerPoint and then we'll take a look at some resources that, uh, that are out there, things that are beginning to change a little bit. And so I'm going to start sharing the screen. I'm going to keep it in this particular uh, viewing mode. Uh, and uh, so that I can jump around to the different resources. So uh, again, uh, the, one of the reasons why we're here is the, to make sure that we're connecting with each other. Uh, there is that chat feature. So right now I cannot see it. So if you are um, chatting, uh, maybe you can jump in uh, and either say something or just have to wait. The agenda today is we're going to be providing an uh, access update. Uh, we'll be talking about ACT and then just again a reminder about opt-outs. So let's move into access. Um, as of yesterday, the state window has opened. Um, what that has done um, is uh, there are 6,000 tests were taken yesterday statewide. I got a call in the afternoon from DPI, uh, double checking to see how things are going for us. We did start slow. We had about 45, 40 tests that were taken. Um, almost all of them were completed. Uh, I have a couple schools that wanted to start early, so they're uh, picking up today. Um, and so far, what we found is that everything seems to be going pretty well, including the speaking component. Uh, one of the big pieces is the, um, the turnaround time from the listening and reading component to when you get the tiered placement for speaking and writing. Last year, we said about five hours or overnight. What we're finding right in earlier this year, I said about an hour. Um, yesterday, um, East was working on some kids who are going to be gone um, for most of the window. They found the turnaround time between finishing the listening and reading uh, components to getting the tiered placement for writing and speaking was uh, less than five minutes. So it certainly is, seems to be um, at this point much better. Uh, the speaking component that they also did yesterday seemed to work fine. Uh, again, we want to keep this um, uh, the speaking component in a small numbers to begin with and we'll see how we go as we move on. But I just wanted to give you an update that things are rolling. Uh, we're watching this carefully and making sure that we're able to uh, uh, troubleshoot wherever there uh, may be some, some issues. Now, the important part for today. First of all, uh, if you have not logged into um, Pearson Next, please do so. Uh, we're gonna go through some of the timelines because the, the, uh, with the holidays and accommodations and all some of the, the issues that are arising, um, I don't want anybody to miss dates. So keep in mind that the accommodations window opened on November 7th, so all of November, and we're definitely into the middle of it. Uh, these accommodations are both for ACT and for work keys. So when you have completed uh, the accommodation, it's, don't look for now what are we gonna do for work keys. Uh, upcoming in January, uh, there are two parts of the training sessions for test administration, and these webinars, if you don't make those, that's fine, uh, January and February, uh, they will be posted on DPI's ACT training page. And we're going to take a look at that in just a minute. Uh, here's a couple things that have come up recently. Now, in the past, we have had limited number of off-site location, the ability to have off-site locations. I think the number was five. Uh, that does not seem to be the issue this year. And your offsite managing the offsites is going to be a, runs a little bit different uh, than in the past. Uh, the the case in point is uh, East uh, B called me and said, "What about Horizons?" And so we talked through that. And Horizons, for instance, may have 
at the time of the test, a student from every single high school and uh, in the district. And so who's responsible for horizons, uh, et cetera? There are two ways after having a long conversation with ACT, there are two ways to go ahead and approach this. Number one is that you um, are in the near future, in January, going to be placing an order for all your students. Of course, we're going to help you with that and getting the, the list ready um, when that comes out. But that will include, or it may include, all the students who are in off-site programs. Now, this has changed from the, in the past. Um, so just be aware of that. So one way that we could uh, potentially solve this, this issue of, of multiple high school students, their primary enrollment is in your school and they are in a program off-site, is that you order um, the tests for all of your students. Deliver them to the site, pick them up from the site after testing, and send them along with the rest of your students' um, tests uh, when you send them back the following, uh, the following day or with the, the students who have accommodations um, two weeks later. That's one option. A second option would be designate one school to order all the tests for the students, regardless of which school they're from. So if Horizon has, Horizons um, has five students, let's say, and they're from one of each of the four high schools plus Shabazz. Um, we'll just pick on, uh, I'll, I'll just say, um, East might be agree, the agree, agreed upon um, designated school. East orders, places an order for those all those students, delivers them to Horizon, and when those students write down which school uh, they belong to in Block K, I think it is, they put on the code for their own high school. All the tests get delivered back to East, East ships them out, and we're all good. So there are two ways of doing that. It might depend on the program. Um, I know that Horizon, just by the nature of the program, uh, may not have, um, as of today, you might have three students there. Um, as of February 28th, you might have zero. So this is something that we're going to have to just kind of play by ear as we go, um, and we'll get some further detail on that um, um, as we move forward. Now, here's an important point. Uh, in order for us, Sarah and I, to help you with um, any ac accessibility or accommodations, uh, we do not have access to TAA, to that piece of the software. Um, there is no longer a trusted agent, um, as we had last year, of which they won't trust me, so uh, that's okay. But um, it turns out that even the, the state coordinator at DPI does not have access to TAA and therefore cannot help anyone with that. So it's only a high school and a, uh, a ACT issue. Now, ACT and the DPI said, one of the things that could happen is that uh, each of the schools give me and Sarah access to your TAA. So we'd have to set us up as users of TAA so then we can come in and take a look and potentially help you. So uh, just so you're aware that that's, that's um, a possibility. So if you could please um, set us up with access to your individual school TAA, that would be greatly helpful. more information on ACT. This is especially true with the accommodations piece. Uh, there is a form called consent to release information to ACT. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip over to um, a, another screen and we'll take a look at where these forms are, what they look like. Uh, and let's see, I'm going to Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how we can, uh, how I can keep sharing this. Um, okay, so now I'm on the, uh, the web. Uh, I am going to take a look at our web page. 
on our coordinator webpage. And there's several forms here, several things that um, are available for you. Um, first of all, is this consent to release information. If a student, if a family um, is going to uh, apply for ACT accommodations, this is something that they will need to sign. This is probably something that's signed, scanned, and sent back to ACT with other information. The question has come up, what happens if a parent refuses to sign? Um, it doesn't get in anybody's hands. They, it comes in late. Uh, my understanding is that, that this is ACT's call. Um, however, I want to make sure that we do due diligence on getting the parents this information. So if you say, I've sent it home, uh, let's talk about how you send it home. Uh, we have emails, you can set it as an attachment, uh, physically hand it to the student to take home. But I also would like uh, us to try mailing it home uh, if it becomes an issue. And if it needs to be a letter from me with a copy of the release form, uh, please let me know um, so that I can get this done in a timely manner. Another thing that's available on our website is the non-college reportable information. So here are the, um, the forms. If a student has an IEP or a 504, um, or if the student is an ELL, these forms need to be signed. Remember that there are three different kinds of accommodations. Number one is ACT approved. Everything is good. Uh, we, we have to set up the accommodations in the classrooms, etc. The second type is what's called a state accommodation, and the third type is a local accommodation. Both of these, or neither of these, will create college reportable information. We want to ensure that parents are fully aware of this particular uh, issue if they do not, uh, if they want accommodations, but ACT doesn't provide them, uh, doesn't approve them, excuse me, or if it's uh, something that ACT does not um, accept, Etc. So we want to make sure that that this these forms are signed, that parents know that they're not getting a college reportable result. Uh, um, so if we're using non-standard accommodations, please make sure that these forms are signed. Uh, what else is on here? Latest update to the the uh, checklist. I just kind of want to go through this particular uh, calendar. Um, this is on the website. This is also on DPI site. Uh, you'll notice that here we, this is where we're at in the window for uh, the submission of ACT approved accommodations. The training dates. Um, you'll notice also that January 13th is when the student data upload happens. Uh, we're also going to be adding, there'll be some time for us to upload our own students. So then uh, when we talk about, for instance, Horizon High School, that would be an important date. Uh, down here, um, you'll see January 23rd through February 24th. These are the late accommodation applications. Keep in mind that there are only a few cases in which ACT will accept a late uh, accommodation uh, request. Number one, if they are enrolled, newly enrolled at the school or newly classified. So if a student comes to us uh, from Illinois, and enrolls after uh, January 20th or that their paperwork hasn't caught up with them, um, this is a case that, that you can apply, um, or if they are newly identified. Now, we've had uh, some questions about families trying to, quote unquote, game the system with suddenly um, applying and wanting 504s. Uh, typically, uh, and then I'll a meeting? No, no, you're okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make sure that we're, uh, I need to go back and make sure that we're all muted. Um, so hang on just a second. You wait for work credit to be applied. Good. Very different from what you're going to do, but yeah. yeah. I okay. Uh, I'm going to continue sharing. Sorry about that. Um, Okay, so um, newly classified, uh, I was talking about uh, potential of 504s. Um, in theory, the uh, plan should have been in place a year ago. Um, 
I will let, this is, this is something that ACT makes the call on. So if a family is pushing really hard to get the accommodations for um, ACT um, right now, that's completely in ACT's um, lap. Uh, there is a date to uh, request reconsideration, and that is the 27th of January. So if somebody comes through and ACT says no to accommodations, you can submit a reconsideration. Going back to the late approvals, um, if you're newly identified or if you've newly, um, uh, a new 11th grader for whatever reason that is, uh, people who have previously approved accommodations or sudden medical emergencies or conditions. So those are things that are happening for those late accommodations. I'm gonna jump back to the, uh, the web page real quickly. The uh, ACT website is up and running. It uh, looks different than it did last year, but there's still some very good information. First of all, uh, this is Jennifer Bell is our new consultant at DPI. Uh, we have some of the dates set up here. You can get, you can log into Pearson Access Next and TestNav. Uh, but then as you go down, we've got the different materials available. So for instance, if you wanted to take a look at manuals and supplements, you can click on that. Here are the current manuals that are available. So how do you get to, you know, taking a look at the calculator policy, accommodations, et cetera. You'll notice that the um, manual administration manual for standard time and paper is not available yet. So this is the site that you would go to to find most of the information from um, ACT, uh, regarding materials as well as training. So here is, uh, uh, let's see, I know that there were some, there's accommodations training. So there are a lot of videos out there ready to go for accommodations. Uh, the regular training will be up and running later on um, as we get closer to the test date. Uh, let me just double check to make sure that this is everything that I wanted to share with you at this point. Um, and I think we're all good. Uh, so I will uh, open it to any questions. If you have a question, why don't you um, type it in the chat. I uh, just want to make sure I know Sarah is on the line in another room, so she's monitoring that as well. Uh, so. Um, here's here's a, a question regarding um, students who are at Capitol High um, and uh, Marianne and her team are going to be taking care of that. Um, that would be all ordered there, but if I believe if they are if students are primary enrolled at your school with a secondary enrollment elsewhere, um, uh, that's when we have some, some questions. And I know there was, how do we find out whether we have a student in Horizons? Uh, we'll work on getting that information to you. Uh, so, I uh, really don't have a whole lot unless there are some questions. I wanted to make sure that we did get this uh, uh, information out simply because there are changes. Uh, again, uh, we have to figure out who is located where. Again, we want participation as close to 100% as we possibly can. We went through the, the reasons for um, deductions on the report cards last time. Uh, we want to try and avoid that. So if we can at all possible um, get collect all of the students that, uh, that are out there that are in our charge, I uh, just want to make sure that, uh, that it's, there's a possibility. Of, of getting those. So, uh, does anybody have any questions? If not, then uh, I'll kind of wait for a minute here. Okay, so. Uh, email us, call us, uh, let us know. Uh, we will, we will uh, make sure that uh, we get our answers to you as quickly as possible. We just wanted to make sure that we touch base on a few things as deadlines are coming up. 
Um, again, I don't want to wait until the last minute because of all the, the details that surround some of the students and their enrollments. So uh, just want to say thank you to everyone and we'll try this again um, in the future if it works. If uh, you've got some feedback, send me an email. Um, if you hated it, um, send me an email. Let me know. So I'm going to stop the recording.